Today's episode is presented by Lodestar, the fee experts. Hi, everyone. My name is Elena Gardner, and welcome to another episode of Lodestar's Lending Leaders. Today, I'm joined with Robert Palmer from Byte Software, and we're going to talk all things rebranding um, as we at Lodestar went through a rebrand a little under two years, over two years ago at this point. And you guys just went through a rebrand over there at Byte. So yeah. we're going to talk some lessons learned and what you can uh, learn and gain out of doing a successful rebrand with a company. Um, thank you so much, Bobby, for joining me today. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. Look forward to uh, talking some marketing, some brand building, and hopefully it'll be at least uh, somewhat useful for companies as, and hopefully originators as well too. They're looking to grow their their personal brand. So um, personal brand just, is important. I mean, I just made a bunch of marketing departments around the country very upset at me for talking about originators building their brands, but uh, I mean, it's what it is. So exactly. Yeah. Um, you can have both, right? You can. Um, so you have an extensive background in both a marketing and the mortgage housing industry. Um, how did you get to where you are? I, we always like to learn about a little bit about people's backgrounds and you know how you got to the position you are in today. Well, like probably many of us in the mortgage industry, I kind of fell into the industry um, as started as a graphic designer actually uh, with a company called Guarantee Residential Lending almost exactly 21 years ago um, yeah. in March of 02. So it's been a it's been a minute. Um, in fact, I was just, I was just cleaning something out and I stumbled across a, um, an old catalog and I was looking at some of my old designs. So like, oh, these are just awful. <laughs> so we've come a long way, but, um, but yeah, that's, that's where I started and, and met some really awesome people along the way that, uh, I was very fortunate, kind of took me under their wing. I knew nothing about the mortgage industry and, um, have really kind of helped me, you know, get to where I'm at today and, um, kind of give a shout out to uh, Tim Marino who got, you know, gave me my first start. And uh, he's actually, I think I could see his house almost out my window. Now we became good friends. I eventually moved out here. He's my neighbor. So uh, he's been in the industry forever, still is. And, um, and then others along the way, you know, Richard Magel, uh, Bob and Diana Carter, Mike Morehouse, um, to name a few, John Rainier, who's now here at Byte with me. We've worked at past companies. So yeah, it's, it's all about, uh, people and making those connections and, and, uh, being very fortunate with that actually. So, okay. You and I were in marketing, right? We're storytellers. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I'll have to tell a quick story. And if I get too long with it, you cut me <laughs> off. So I tell people all the time, I, I got kind of to where I'm at today, um, by being a bit of a 10 year old. <laughs> so Richard Magel was the CFO of, mm -hmm. of guarantee bank uh, or guarantee residential link member. And I'm doing this PowerPoint presentation and I I'm 20 something years old. I don't know what this stuff is. There was this thing called the functionality matrix. And I'm like, this is so boring. So I ended up Photoshopping everybody in that slide into a scene from the matrix, including Richard Magel, who's like this high ranking guy. I'm this nobody. And apparently he thought it was pretty funny. I could probably could have gotten fired over this, but so I'm giving bad advice, but, uh, but he thought it was pretty funny. And it was, it was, this is actually going to tie into what we're going to talk about later doing something that's memorable. And he remembered it. And later on after, you know, there was an acquisition and we all got laid off. Um, he went to another company and he remembered that and brought me back as his, he needed a marketing guy. And that's kind of what launched me to where I'm at today. So yeah, it's, uh, I got I'm to where I'm at because I photoshopped rest. somebody into Neil from the matrix. So <laughs> go figure that one out. Unpack that one. Uh, yeah. I think in marketing, there's stranger things that have gotten people jobs. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The Duolingo owl is, I think a great one. Uh, it's a hilarious thing on TikTok. I, I'm pretty sure I got a job one time because I wore a SpongeBob tie to the interview. So I mean, um, fair. Ties, in, um, ties into the ties into the name though. So um, you know, gotta be memorable. I like it. Um, so since you've been in the industry for a minute in marketing, how would you say that marketing in the industry has changed, especially in the last two to three years with the pandemic and a really big shift, I think, from traditional marketing to more digital assets? You know what's funny is um I, I, in certain aspects, it's changed, but I think marketing in general, at least the core principles, and, and we'll kind of touch on those here in a little bit, I don't really think they have. Um, I think uh, the number of channels you know that we have access to definitely has um, and, and what people are, are selling in terms of digital, but, but the core principles of it, I don't really think have, it's kind of funny. I saw a podcast the other day uh, from a guy who's very well known in the industry. I'm sure if I said his name, everybody would know who I'm talking about, but I don't know. So I don't want to, I don't want to use his name without permission, but um, you know, I saw it was a video podcast and, and he was talking about how he's going back to his loan officers. And this is a highly digital lender mm -hmm. talking about 
getting back out there and going to open houses and growing your realtor base and your referral base, which is you know, what we've done forever. So while a lot of things have changed, I, I do think there are some principles that you know, are, are kind of the same. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. But I guess the cool thing today for marketers, there's so many more tools than we have, yeah. like even when I got started and for originators too, for people that, you know, don't maybe don't have a big marketing team or, or they're kind of doing this on their own. There's so many more tools out there now where you can create content, you can create video, you can um, get it out into the world through a variety of channels. So it really, it, it's an exciting time it can be exhausting yeah. time <laughs> to be a marketer. Uh, but it's also really exciting because there's just, uh, there's so much opportunity to promote and grow your brand. Yeah, I think that's uh, at the end of the day, right? The mortgage industry is a relationship based industry. And I think there's so much of that that won't go away, right? Uh, there are some people you're never going to sell to through an ad. They want to know somebody, they need a reference, they need a referral. And really, I think with marketing, you're kind of building that base level of brand trust before mm -hmm. they get to that referral, right? If someone's never heard of you, they're probably not going to go with you. So there's a little bit of that as well. Um, and I think you dove a little bit into this with the new modern era, you know, with, uh, you know, you need a logo and you need a brand that can translate well into so many different facets, right? Um, especially as a loan officer. <laughs> compliance team's nightmare, exactly. Um, and luckily, you know, here at Lodestar, we're B2B. So we only currently manage a Facebook yeah. page and a LinkedIn page. But for a lot of teams, that means they're managing Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, mm -hmm. LinkedIn, uh, email mar marketing, and, you know, every new, I think I saw another one that's coming up, Lemon 8 or something that's coming up to replace TikTok. I don't know. There's a new social media platform every day. Um, yeah. So you know, when you do a rebrand, how do you manage that and what makes it effective? Yeah, you know, um, cause it's hard. You I, have to put I, your logo in a lot of places. <laughs> you do. Um, and I think for mortgage companies specifically, it can be a little bit more challenging. Although, although what, what makes a good brand, um, whether you're rebranding or building from the start is really the same. Um, mm -hmm across all sorts of industries, right? But for mortgage companies, another thing that, that another layer is that it's unique. You've got the, the company brand, right? And maybe that there's retail and now you have multiple channels, but you also have, let's say you've got a hundred branches and you've got 500 loan officers. You really have the potential for almost 500 different brands. So, and maybe 50 to 75 sub brands, depending on how the branches are set up. And then you throw in brokers in there that maybe, you know, kind of have their own brand, but they, they don't have full control over the experience that comes with that brand because they're sending it off to another, a whole nother company. So it, it definitely can be a big challenge. Um, and I think, you know, for Byte, when we were going through our rebrand, it, it's not it, technically it's a rebrand, but it was, there was never really a formal brand development that went on before this. So, it, you know, but we've been around for 35 years. Mm -hmm. So there is a brand. It, it may not have been super crafted by a team at Byte, but the brand exists. So um, for me, it was really about understanding where that brand was at organically and then trying to define it a little bit more clearly. So then we can turn around and articulate that in a way that's memorable and that connects with our, our current clients um, you know, connects with our employees. That's super important. It has to connect internally and then also connect with potential new clients. So, um, yeah, that's kind of, kind of where things started at bite. Yeah. I mean, for us at Lodestar, when I came on, we were kind of going through the rebrand and kind of very similarly, we had had someone do our logo, but it kind of felt, um, very blocky, very, you know, it, it, it felt dated. Like you looked at it and it felt sure. dated. Um, and a lot of our assets were as well. So when we did the rebrand, it really became not only about the color scheme um, and like we got the rebrand done by a design firm. We had this beautiful new palette to work with. And then you kind of don't know where to go from there is I think the biggest thing that I learned, right? When yeah. you have someone else kind of design it, you then have to take it and put your own personality on it and create the actual brand voice. Mm -hmm. And for us, that meant becoming fun and silly and kind of taking this very formal brand to a more like 
human level, because that's who we are as a company. And we realized that we needed to echo that um, in our content marketing and all of that. Um, and I think, you know, when we're talking about presenting ourselves online and the way that you design a site or develop content, um, it's so important to really think about, you know, who we are, right? Um, and at the end of the day, right, I say a lot of the times our brand is the marketing content manager I have who writes all of our copy, right? Yeah. Or it's our very heavily branded and designed booths that we travel with now because you want you walk up to our booth and you know it's a Lodestar booth, yeah. right? You, yeah. Even though the logo is everywhere, you don't actually need that. Yeah, that's, and, the, that's a sign of a solid brand. Exactly. Um, um, yeah, so how do you guys use that? You know, when I talk to people about brand and again, you know, I'm trying to gear this towards, you know, whether it's a company that's looking at doing this or even individuals, you, you know, first you have to start with, okay, what is brand, right? Mm -hmm. is, is it your logo? Is it your color scheme? Is it, you know, there's all these things that kind of fall under that, especially if you do any Googling, you can get overwhelmed very quickly. There's brand identity, there's positioning, there's style, there's personality, voice, your brand promise, your taglines. I mean, it just goes on and on and it becomes this kind of like, okay, how, what are each of these things? So um, for me, I, I try to simplify it. A brand is just a person's gut feeling about your mm -hmm. company. It's it's kind of organic that way. And it's really not even like as marketers, we can try to kind of craft that and steer that, but really it's not what we say it is. It's what, of course that goes off. Um, it's what they say it is. It's what the customers say it is. It's what they feel it is. And that may be different for different customers. So when you, when you, I think it's helpful to first start with thinking about a brand of, okay, it's a person's feeling about um, your company. And that comes from every interaction. So I, I was fortunate enough to spend seven years at Disney. And before we ever stepped foot on stage, we went through a pretty intense training program. At least that's the way they did it back then. I don't know if they still do it today. Because they knew that it was important that even if I was the guy working out in the parking lot, I still represented the brand. And that's how the big, you know, the really well-defined brands grow. They know that it's every interaction that a person has. So for Byte, it could be when they call in for tech support. It could be when they call in to request a demo. You know, those people that they talk to, even though they're not marketers, they're not part of my marketing team, like they impact our brand. So that's kind of where I start. Um, and then from there, I think it's helpful because you have all of those different things you have to define to break it down into three simple things. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today is mm -hmm. number one, it has to be authentic. Start, mm -hmm. start there today. If it's not authentic, it's not going to work. Yeah. Um, it has to connect. It has to resonate with your, your kind of core audience and it, it, meaning it has to like be something to someone. And then the third one is it has to be memorable. You know, as you, as you mentioned, being able to walk up to, to the Lodestar booth and, and that, kind of identity you guys have come up with. Oh yeah, that's low star. You don't even need the sign. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of it. And I don't know how much you want to dive into to those three. Um, I, I got plenty. I can talk about this for hours and hours. So I know we don't have that, but um, I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you steer from there. Yeah. And I think it's, I, I think you made a very good point with um, at the end of the day, our, our brand is our culture, right? Um, and I think that's how companies like Disney, who you worked for, and I worked for the Ritz Carlton brand for a really long time. Mm -hmm. uh, those are two probably the most well protected brands in in the entirety of existence. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of times when we talk about branding, we talk about brand guidelines. And uh, I don't know if anyone's ever gotten one of those beautiful sheets that tell you how many set like millimeters or pixels you can have something you take away the letter from J an and you turn it sideways and that's how much space you need to have around your logo exactly yeah. um and i think it in today's world that's just not sustainable because we have people that are using our logos that are using our brand that are using brilliant tools like canva right but they don't have the same capabilities that a uh Photoshop has when we're talking about brand guidelines to have the pixel and you can, but a lot of times people who are using Canva are not classically changed, trained, uh, you know, digital designers. I'm not one, right? I'm good at Canva, but if you put me in Photoshop, I would get lost. Um, and I think that's so important to know. Um, and I think when talking about authenticity, you know, I think one of the biggest things that, you know, at Lodestar, when we're deciding what we're going to do, you know, is we want to create content that provides value, right? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, that is how we feel like we can be our most authentic self. How does, how, what makes that effective in your mind? And what's, you know, the difference between just adding noise to the space and providing yeah. value? I think that, you know, when we talk about authenticity is hard, right? Because what your might be your authentic self is, could be considered noise sometimes, right? Yeah, no, that's true. Be that's, uh, as people. That's, that's, de that's definitely a challenge. I mean, um, I, I guess that's a bit of a loaded question too, because it's very, Not at all. <laughs> I know it's just very medium specific and very mm -hmm. product specific, to be honest, like, um, and that's again, a much longer conversation than we probably have time for here, but like, you can't really look at content in a vacuum because going mm -hmm. back to, you know, being able to connect with people, like it's marketing is all about getting the right message to the right person at the right time. Right. Yeah. And so we can't really have a conversation about content uh, if you're not talking about Matt, how do you match it with the right audience in the right time within your sales cycle, let's say. Yeah. So what may be noise to me may be awesome value to you, right? Because of, uh, of, of where we are and, and, and how we connect and things like that. So it, it is really hard to, to answer that question is, you know, I guess it comes down to like quantity versus quality. Is that kind of, a little bit what yeah, we're talking about I, too. I, sometimes I, yeah. if somebody's putting stuff out every day, okay, yeah, their name, their brand is top of mind. Um, so when it comes time to looking at getting an LOS or looking at getting a fee management system or buying a car or choosing a realtor or, or choosing a loan officer, maybe you go with the one that you've seen the most uh, because you mm -hmm. remember them, uh, even if it didn't really connect with you um, versus somebody that's really putting in the effort. And when they put out something, maybe it's not every day, but when they put it out, it's like, oh, I'm going to listen because there's some good value there. Um, so I think that's the, the biggest challenge. I guess if I had to, if I have a minute to answer the question, you do. <laughs> it would be focus on creating more in, it's what we're going to try to do here, Byte. Focus on creating more in-depth content. Um, let's say we're going to do a webinar with you guys and we're going to showcase mm -hmm. our integration and how data flows back and forth between our platforms. That's valuable to our clients, it's valuable to people that are considering using you or us and how is that automation going to work and help them. And then, but it's maybe it's a 20 minute thing. Then take that and chop it up into smaller bits so that you can put out more pieces of content throughout the week um, where, you know, and probably our integration is extremely boring and not the greatest uh, topic for content. But you see where I'm going with this. Like, yeah. um, you know, we could go to an event. You can go to MBA annual. You know, if you're a lender, maybe there's, um, you know, there's local community events that you can go to and you can take a whole bunch of footage of those events. You can talk to different people, uh, kind of get the feel for the vibe of, of what's going on in their lives in the community and housing prices and all these sorts of things. And then you can chop that up into little bits and put it out through your social channels or, you know, again, it's very channel specific to answer that question too. Yeah. Um, that's kind of what I would probably steer people towards is, uh, stick with the value and then use the value, chop it up to make it, to get your quantity or your frequency is probably a better word. Yeah, and I think yeah. there is that value, right? Of At some point you do have to just say what you do, right? Yeah. I think that's something on social, a lot of times you kind of almost shy away from, but if you don't say what you do occasionally, people might follow you for great content, but they're not the right bar buyer or borrower or just the, the correct person for you to be talking to, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's so important as well is, you know, having those moments when you're like, hey, this is a little bit of a sales pitch. Here's what we do. But at the same time, the rest of your content being valuable and yeah. meaningful for people. Um, so they follow you for the value and they occasionally get told, hey, by the way, this is what we do. It's kind of important yeah. that you know. Well, that. And keep those core <laughs> principles in mind, too. You know, be authentic. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, try to try to connect to your core audience and then and to make it memorable. You know, if you if you keep those three things in mind as you're as you're going through and and, and designing your content, you're gonna accomplish those things that you were just talking about. So, you know, for example, on on connecting like with Byte, you know, we can't be everything to everybody. No brand mm -hmm. should. Right. I, we, we're back in college, we had this advertising professor who was awesome. She worked for, she came from one of the biggest agencies in LA and she used to just drill it into us constantly. Be something to somebody. Don't try to be mm. everything to everybody because you'll be nothing to everybody. Right. Yeah. And so at Byte, when we were going through our brand and it's hard, it's hard <laughs> for a, a, a loan officer 
it's hard mm-hmm. for a lender because you're basically saying there's going to be a group of people, not that we don't care about you, but you're, we don't, <laughs> you know what I mean? You're, you're not, not my core right business. Fit, right. And that's yeah. the only way you're going to be able to connect, whether it's through your content um, or, or just as you build your brand organically. So you got to figure that out. You, you got to figure out who you want to be and who your target audience is. So go talk to your, talk to your customers, right? If I'm a loan officer, I'm going to go talk to my realtor partners. Why do you refer me? Why did you? Yeah. Send business to me in the first place. If you're, you know, if you're a lender, you know, really look at okay, where are our customers coming from? Um, who they, you know, at Byte, that's what I did when I got here. I talked to mm-hmm. our folks internally uh, to get a feel for that because it has to be authentic. Um, I went and talked to our customers. Okay, why did you pick Byte? What do you love about Byte? What do you not? You know, and and see where those intersections are. And what we found um, really made developing our rebrand and. and um, Putting it in a way that we can articulate it really easy. Um, a lot of what yeah. you see with Byte, talking about the freedom to do business the way you want to, uh, being a bit of a control freak, you know, the, the LOS for control freaks. It's that all came from talking to our customers and then looking at our competitors and saying, okay, where are those little segments we can get into? Um, yeah. Where are we going to position ourselves? So, you know, again, it's a, I could talk about this for hours, but in <laughs> short, you know, that is, if you keep those three things in mind, I think it really helps you answer all those questions that are media specific and product specific mm-hmm. and whether it's email campaigns or, or display campaigns or, I mean, the, like the cereal aisle <laughs> these days, you know, you, there's you just, know there's a lot try. of noise. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of noise. And I think one of the things that I really focus on is, you know, it's great to be doing something, but also you don't have to do everything. Yeah. Um, so for us, that means, you know, I have, Technically, if you go look, we have a we have an Instagram page. We hosted, nice, we nice. took our name, we took the space. We've never posted a thing. Yeah, and it will stay that way, right? And I think there's some value in that as well as realizing where you don't need to be. Mm-hmm. And especially if you're B two C, you're not going to see the same results across platform, right? Where you have the majority of your people is where they're going to be, and yeah. you you should always diversify just because you don't know what's going to happen, especially you know with TikTok in you know congress and endless it's endless endless but, endless but yeah like you know for you guys for media us, space but LinkedIn's like it's a great platform mm-hmm. right let's get really good at that let's you get know, really let's, good at that there's no let, point in me being up, on TikTok. let's serve up good content there and be something to somebody there mm-hmm. versus trying to manage a TikTok account and instagram and uh you know facebook and all these all these other ones and, the, and it's just like it's all this effort and you're really not connecting with people no um, so as we wrap up here today, I'm going to ask the biggest question, oh, okay. um, which is the lodestar Ooh. question. Lodestar um, question. Okay. So a lodestar means a guiding light in the ninth sky, okay. um, which sailors use to navigate themselves by. So what nice. do you consider like in your life or in your career? You can pick either to okay. be your lodestar. My lodestar, huh? Yeah. Um, You know, I would say obviously family, you know, Mm -hmm. I, I, am really lucky uh, and really blessed to have a lot of, uh, really good role models, uh, throughout my family. Um, I guess if I had to call anybody out without offending (laughs) anyone else in in my family, luckily Easter just passed. So I don't have to see everybody for a while. No one's going to throw any food at me for not mentioning them. Uh, but no, uh, joking aside, my, my brother, Scotty's my younger brother. Um, he has cerebral palsy and, um, Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to look much further past that to really get inspiration. Um, I mean, the kid's just he's been through so much in his life, more than any of us would ever imagine. But he never complains, ever. Like, mm-hmm. seriously, I he's, what is he, 30, turning 40 this year? Jeez. Wow. Just dated myself. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, got the headphones on so you can't see the gray hair. Um, but no, he. I've never heard him complain once, ever, mm-hmm. a day in his life. And so for me it just really keeps things in perspective. And, you know, if I'm having a bad day, it's really not that bad, you know, yeah. and, uh, and just don't take little things in life for granted. So that would be probably number one. Um, on, a, on a lighter note, uh, I'm a hockey nut, you know, that <laughs> we, we, we talk about hockey a yes. little bit when we get together at shows. So, um, but I do, I, I do, I draw a lot of inspiration from, um, you know, how much of a team sport it is. Cause it's usually not, the best team with the most skill that wins the Stanley cup is the team that finds a way to work together uh, the best. And that's willing to 
you know, sacrifice things for the good of the team, that's willing to push themselves to the next level for the guy sitting next to him uh, um, or, or, or girls sitting next to him. You know, women's hockey's really taken off now, which is awesome. Um, and just all the things that really go into building a winning culture. You know, you talked about culture earlier. Mm-hmm. Y- you can't win without it. And it's so hard. And it's one of those things that's just kind of like, you know, it's hard to put a finger on it. Like, okay, what is it that really um, builds a winning culture? So I find that really intriguing and um, an inspirational on how you build that winning culture and sustain it and then pass it on to those that come after you. So, yeah. And, and it wouldn't be a podcast if I couldn't find a way to sneak hockey in there some way. So, I mean, that's um, fair. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, might, I originally planned to get it in here about three different ways. So I'll just do one. Okay, we perfect. Bore, we won't bore everybody. <laughs> uh yeah no i've uh i've realized the mortgage industry is full of hockey nuts um so it's we're like, around yeah yeah if you ever want to get somebody to not sight. stop talking find a hockey person then bring up bring it up so awesome well body before we wrap up today where can people find you if they're looking for you online and they want to connect me personally or bite i mean you can get both you get both okay uh yeah i'm on, I'm on linkedin uh i think i'm on linkedin under bobby so um I, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, look look me up there, um, Bobby at Byte Software, and then you can check out Byte ByteSoftware.com and and uh, be interesting. I love to, you know, to be honest. You know, whether you're an originator uh, or you're a marketing you know person that saw this and was like, hey, you know, I'm a marketing person. I'd love to get feedback. You know, I I think that's so important is is to get honest feedback from people. So you know, go check out our site, see what you think. Uh, you know, you, you heard we went through a rebrand. I'd love to hear. Uh, what they think of the new site and uh, and some of the messaging we have on there. So uh, yeah, bytesoftware.com. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone so much for listening to our podcast today. Um, we'll be back next week with another episode and we will also have um, our webinar with Byte coming up actually, I believe about a week after this airs. Yeah. Um, so please yeah. feel free to Good check time. that out. It'll be on all of our socials. Um, and thank you so much. And we'll see everyone next week. Thanks. Next podcast, we'll have to do like, we'll smoke a brisket or something and, you know, we'll have barbecuing tips. So this week, this week we had branding tips. Next week we'll do. I like it. You still like like Bobby's never coming on here again. (laughs) (laughs) Great to see you. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you for listening to the Lodestar's Lending Leaders podcast. Please like, subscribe, and rate us five stars anywhere you get your podcasts. A special thank you to the Lodestar podcast production team. Jim Paolino, Tim Austin, and John Gardner.